people of all the fortune, don't you? He's somewhere in Florida or somewhere. And then, I suppose maybe Gilkeen's the second best, but anyway. Now, let's just have a little word of prayer as we come to God's Word this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lovely day that you've given to us. We praise you, Father, for being able to be gathered in your house this morning with your people. We pray that you would bless us, Lord, with thy presence. We know that you have promised that where your people gather, that you would be in the midst of them. But we pray that we might be conscious, Lord, of your nearness with us today. We ask, our Father, that you'll speak to all our hearts. As we differ, Lord, so does our needs differ. And we ask of thee, O gracious God, that you would minister to our souls this morning, that we might be strengthened in our faith, that we might be refreshed as a new week begins, and that you'll help us, O God, to be drawn closer to thee. Fill us by your Spirit. Help us to be in the Spirit on the Lord's day as John was of old, and that we might have such an experience as he had then. And so we wait on thee now for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Now, I want to read with you uh, today in the book of Exodus, chapter 15. The book of Exodus, chapter 15, and we're going to read from verse 22 to verse 27. Exodus, chapter 15, and at verse number 22. And it says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Sur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he cast, had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. We know the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his word. I'm sure that you know the early chapters of the book of Exodus, how that God heard the cry of his people who had been in bondage in Egypt for 400 years. And you remember how the people cried to God, and God heard their cry, and he raised up Moses and Aaron and sent them to Pharaoh to ask Pharaoh to let his people go. You remember, of course, how that Pharaoh refused and how that the, day, the, the plagues came upon the land. And then finally, that final plague of the firstborn came, uh, how that God moved through the land on the firstborn of every home and the firstborn of all cattle on a certain day uh, when they woke that morning was to be slain. And God said to Moses, listen, tell the people to take a lamb and to... Make sure it's perfect without blemish. And kill the lamb and take the blood and put it on the doorpost and lentil of the door. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And that's what happened. The, the Passover night came. And in the morning, there was a great cry went out throughout all Egypt when the Egyptians woke and saw that their their firstborn was gone, and it was through that that God brought his people out of Egypt under Moses and Aaron. You remember he delivered them that day, brought them out. 
and led them on, and they crossed the Red Sea. And when they got to the other side of the Red Sea, as, as, as the uh, Pharaoh and his, his, his chariots followed after them, you remember how the sea enclosed them and overcame their enemies. And when we come to the beginning of chapter 15, it says this, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. And here we find that they're standing on the other side of the Red Sea, and they're singing redemption song. They're standing on redemption ground, and they're singing redemption's song. And they're praising the Lord for all that he has done for them. And you know, friends, this morning, that's where you and I are today. We're on redemption ground because God's Lamb redeemed us. He shed his blood that you and I might be redeemed. And we're standing on redemption ground. And we can sing redemption song. We used to sing that old, that old hymn, I am redeemed. Oh, praise the Lord, my soul from bondage free. So we're on redemption ground and we're singing redemption song, and we should be praising the Lord for all that he has done for us. And then it says this in verse 22. That's just to get the scene set for what we want to look at. It says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Sur. God is using Moses to lead his people. And we see something here of Moses' great faith. Remember, his name is included in that great company of people that we find in Hebrews chapter 11, that great chapter of faith. And uh, his name is there because, remember that when Moses led the people out of Egypt, we're talking here about somewhere in the region between one and three million people, not just a group, but a a, a, a quite a vast number of people. And you can imagine the needs of that people as they traveled. My, they needed water, they needed food, they uh, would have newborn babies born, uh, there was sickness, there was sanity facilities that they would need. There's a whole host of things. And yet Moses was entrusted with this tremendous task. He knew the wilderness well and its desolate character. And uh, he knew that if they were to follow the northern route, it would not be long until they reached the land of the Philistines where all these needs that they would have could be met. My, but the fact of the matter is this, that he deliberately led them in the southern route on a different route from that. The way through the Philistines was the near route, or the near road, but he, lived, he, he, he led them in the southern route. And the reason he did that was because that was because the pillar of cloud that went before them. You see, a pillar of cloud went before them by day and a pillar of fire by night. And the pillar of cloud was a symbol of the Lord's presence. And Moses led them by this southern way because that was the way that God was leading them. That was the way God was leading them. And you know, friends, sometimes God leads us in ways that we cannot understand. Sometimes, you know, the human mind sees easier ways through life. Sometimes we see shortcuts that we can take that can make life a bit easier for us. But you know, that's not the way God led his people. And if God is leading you this morning, and, and, and you know that God is leading you, then you need to follow him. 
it, it, may, may, it may not be the easy way or the shortest way, but whatever way God leads us, that's the way we need to go. We need to go by faith. In God's way, it may be more difficult than the other way, but it's God's way. So Moses led the people into the wilderness, and uh, we want to see and learn from their experiences. It says here, again in verse 22, and they went three days into the wilderness and found no water. Found no water. They weren't long into the wilderness now. And here's the first big problem, no water. You see, we cannot live without water. My water gives us food. Water gives us refreshment. Without water, the going wasn't going to be easy. And these Israelites might have reasoned uh, that since they were following the cloud and they were in the will of God, they should have had an easy road. But that's not always the case. And God, you see, sometimes He he allows difficulties to come into their life just to prove their faith and to draw them closer to Him. And God does the same with you and me. God does the same with us. Remember, He's the all-wise God. He knows what we need more than we know for ourselves. And sometimes God allows trials to come into our life to test our faith. And sometimes it's when you're in the will of God and obeying God that you seem to get more trials than if you weren't trying to follow the Lord. If you take, for example, the story of the disciples as they traveled across the Sea of Galilee, and the Lord Jesus was in the boat, and he said, let us go to the other side. And when they stepped into that boat, they were right in the center of the will of God. They were doing what he wanted them to do. They were going where he wanted them to go, but they weren't long out until the storm came. And you know, friends, sometimes the storms of life come on God's best and on God's choicest people. And then it says here, just keep your Bible open, if you would please, this morning, verse 23. It says, And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah. You see, we see here not only the barrenness of the wilderness, but we see the bitterness of Marah. My, they could not drink of the waters of Marah for they were better. For three days, there was no water. The first two days must have been hard and difficult. On the third day, I'm sure that Moses, who knew the wilderness, he urged them to press on, knowing that there were pools of water that was ahead. And then they came to the waters of Marah, and I'm sure they saw them at a distance. And when they saw these waters of Mara, I can imagine their step quickening a little bit. And their heart began to pound. And they uh, looked in anticipation. And I'm sure when they got a short way from the waters of Mara, some of them began to run to the waters of Mara because they hadn't had waters for th- water for three days. And they began to drink of the waters of Mara. And my, what disappointment there was, because when they put those waters to their lips, the waters were bitter, and they could not drink. I can imagine them spitting it out and spewing it out. My, what a, what a disappointment. What a disappointment. The waters were bitter, and they could not drink wasn't so long since everything was good and sweet and lovely. They were out of Egypt, and they were on redemption's ground, and they were singing, and now their joy has turned to bitterness. And dear friends, this morning, we all, we all come to the waters of Mara in life. I want to speak to you this morning. 
about the waters of Mara, the bitter waters of Mara. The waters of Mara speak to us about the bitter experiences of life journey. You know, in the context of the passage here, we see here the bitterness of disappointment. My, what disappointment these people must have felt. Moses had told them about the waters of Mara. They hadn't had water for three days. They come to them. They cannot drink the bitterness of disappointment. Remember that time when the Lord had rose from the dead and his disciples were waiting on him at a certain place. And Peter said, I go fishing. And the other disciples said, we also go with thee. And so out they went to catch fish. But that night they caught nothing. That night they caught nothing. And they came home that morning. And as they drifted in in the morning tide, my, their hearts were filled with disappointment. And you know, friends, maybe this is something that you've experienced in your life, the bitter waters of disappointment. My, you've worked hard for something. You've put your best into it, your energy into it, but it has come to nothing. Or you've set your heart on something. Maybe uh, you've applied for a job, and you've got an interview, and the interview went well, and, and you got all the right signs, and, and they told you they would be in touch with you, and you thought, you know, I've, I've, I've got this job that I really wanted to have, and then you hear nothing or you get a letter telling you that somebody else has got the job. Or maybe you are looking for a house and you've made a deal and things have gone well and it's in the final stages. And then at the last moment, someone pulls out and you're back to where you started again. Maybe, dear friends, a relationship you've been in has fallen through and, and my you, you, you've looked forward to something uh, and it has been in your mind and in your diary and, and you've waited and counted the days. Ah, uh, but something has happened and you've tasted the bitter waters of disappointment. Bitter waters of disappointment. You know, friends, the waters of Mara remind us not only of the bitterness of disappointment, but the, bitter, the bitterness of death and bereavement. Lazarus died. And they had two sisters, Mary and Martha. And Martha wept. And, Mar and, and, and Mary wept. And Jesus wept. My dear friends, death comes to every home and to every family. It takes from us our loved ones. And it brings the bitter waters of bereavement. And with it brings tears and heartache. My, there's the bitterness of disease and illness, the bitter waters of disease and illness. You remember that story of Hezekiah in Isaiah chapter 38? Hezekiah was a young man of 39 years of age, and he became ill. He became seriously ill. And then he got a message. The prophet Isaiah came with a message from God, and he said to this young king of 39 years of age, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. You know, friends, people get bad news every day about their health. Maybe get the same kind of news that Hezekiah got. This is a terminal illness. They sit in a doctor's surgery or they sit in a consultant's consulting room in the hospital and they get bad news that that problem, that illness, it's terminal, it's serious, it's life-threatening. And dear friends, others, my live in constant pain now all the days of their life and some people spend their final days in homes and hospitals. They don't know where they are or who they are. 
And these are the bitter waters of life. It comes to us so often. Bitter waters of disappointment. Bitter waters of death and bereavement. Bitter waters of disease and illness. Bitter waters of division. Bitter waters of division. Division in the family. Break up of a marriage. What a bitter experience it affects the whole family. Vision among friends. My Paul and Barnabas went on their first missionary journey. Uh, my God blessed them and used them and, 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 and worked through them. And then they came home and gave the report to the church. And when they went to go the second time, the division among them was so great that they parted the one from the other. The bitterness of defeat being defeated by the world, the flesh, and the devil. The bitter feeling of knowing that you feel God in some way. The bitterness, dear friends, of deception, being let down by a friend or a near one. Bitterness of discouragement. Remember the two on the road to Emmaus? My, that day they went down the Emmaus road, they were discouraged. They had hoped that this Jesus of Nazareth was him that should have redeemed Israel. And they said, today, my, there's some that say is risen from the dead. And they didn't know who to believe or what to believe. And they were completely confused and completely discouraged. And you know, friends, across our land today, there's many of God's people. And they're drinking at the bitter waters of discouragement. Many of God's people are discouraged this morning. Maybe there's somebody here. Maybe there's one or two in this congregation this morning, and you're discouraged in your Christian life. Maybe disillusioned about things. These are just some of the bitter experience we have to taste sometimes. This is the reality of life, friends. No point trying to say, you know what, doesn't happen, or it's not happening, or it will never happen to me. This is relevant to each one of us here this morning. We'll all be at the bitter waters of Mara. We see the barrenness of the wilderness and the bitterness of Mara. And then it says this in verse 24, And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Here's the people who were praising God and at the beginning of the chapter, and now they're murmuring, and they're wanting to know what they're going to drink. And verse 25 says, And he cried unto the Lord. That's the beauty of Moses. You know, friends, when, when uh, we saw his faith in God, he led the people through the wilderness. He could have gone by the short way, and the easy way, but he followed the cloud. And his faith helped him to follow the Lord. And when he came to the waters here at Marah, the people turned against Moses. But the wonderful thing is this, that Moses turned to the Lord. He turned to the Lord. His faith helped him to trust the Lord, even in that situation. He didn't give up. He cried to the Lord. So easy to give up when things are bad. It says that he uh, cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And that's the blessing of the tree. The Lord showed him a tree, which when he cast into the waters, the waters became sweet. So God shows Moses this tree, and he takes this tree, and he casts it into these waters which were bitter, and the waters that were bitter became sweet. The bitter place had become sweet. Yes, the tree speaks to us this morning of the cross. The tree speaks to us of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even though the bitter waters were a bad experience at first, 
They were used to draw the people closer to the Lord, and the tree is a reminder of the cross of Calvary. You see, brethren and sisters, this morning, all that we have and all that we are is related to all that Christ accomplished for us on the tree. Yes? At the cross, we see the proof of God's love for us. At the tree of Calvary, we see the pain of God's Son dying for our sins. At the tree, we see the price being paid, the performance of the sacrifice. At the tree, we see the provision of salvation. And when we bring Christ and his cross into the situations of life that we find ourselves in, remember this, friends, not now, no, no, no matter where we are this morning, maybe your experience in one of the bitter experiences of life, I don't know. But remember this, that we have redemption through the cross. We have forgiveness of sins. Our sins are forgiven us because of the cross. We have peace with God in our soul this morning. We have joy in our heart and mind today. My, we have hope beyond the grave. Yes, we know that God's eternal purpose for his children is that we will be conformed to the image of his Son for all eternity. And no wonder the apostle Paul cried, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, friends, as you travel through the wilderness, the barren wilderness, as you come from time to time to the bitter waters of Marah. Remember, we're the children of God. It didn't change the fact that these people were still the children of God. The waters of Marah didn't change the fact that they belonged to him, they bore his name, that he cared for them, that he was leading them to a better land. And remember this, no matter how life may be treating you this morning, that we are God's children. God loves us. He cares for us. And his wisdom is fitting us for glory. And, and my, as we travel through life, God allows the experiences, the bitter experiences of life to draw us closer to him and make us more like his son. When you bring the cross, when you bring the cross into the bitter experiences of life, it makes the bitter experiences sweet. The waters became sweet. You see, in disappointment, remember the old hymn, he is not a disappointment. He is everything to me. My, the Lord never is a disappointment. In, 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 in death and bereavement, when a loved one is taken, and you shed tears, and rightly so. Yet if that dear one knows the Lord, we sorrow not as others which have no hope. For my, we believe that uh, Jesus died and rose again, and he will bring them with him. We know that they've gone to be with Christ, which is far better. Dear friends, my, in the hour of sickness and illness, what a difference knowing the Lord makes. What a difference. Someone to turn to. Someone that we can bring our illness, our sickness to. One that we can uh, come to in prayer for others that need our prayers. My dear friends, Pen Paul, that lovely phrase in Romans chapter 8, and uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse, verse 18, and he said this, he says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. He says, you know, I reckon that the suffering that you have to go through in this present time, 
it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that lies ahead. Not worthy. Oh, dear friends, this morning, yes, I know, don't know what kind of suffering you're enduring, but I know it's not worthy to be compared with the glory. So when you come to the bitter waters, remember, the bitter waters can be made sweet. When you bring Christ on the cross into your situation and into your experience. Let me finish with this this morning. Down in verse 27. It says, And they came to Elam. You know, the Lord didn't keep them at the waters of Mara. Didn't keep them there. And he'll not keep you there either. He moved them on. It says, when they came to Elam, where were twelve water wells of water and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. You know, friends, that's the benevolence of the Lord. Because here we have blessing following testing. When they came to this place called Elam, there were 12 wells of water. My, there was an abundance. And the 12 wells of water speaks of refreshment. God brought them to a place where there was refreshment for their souls. And three score and ten palm trees. And there they shaded under the palm trees. The palm trees speak of rest. He brought them to the place of refreshment and the place of rest. It didn't keep them at Mara forever. And the wonderful thing is this, brethren and sisters, this morning, as we go through life with all its problems, with all its difficulties, with all its ups and downs, there are far more Elams in life than there are Maras. There are far more Elams than there are Maras. The Lord brought them to that place of refreshment and shade, and they rested there from the burden and heat of the day. Maybe you're here this morning, and you've tasted the bitter waters of Mara. Maybe you're in the midst of them. But you know that you might, like Moses, take this tree and cast it into the waters, and when you turn your eyes upon the Lord and know that he's sovereign, that he loves you, that he cares for you, that he dies for you, that no matter how bitter life can become, he's taking you on to glory, he's taking you home to glory, and nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, and nothing will keep us out of heaven. The Lord is taking you through. And may you find refreshment. And now you find rest as you go through this waste howling wilderness. And may God help us to see the sweetness and the blessedness that there is in Christ. May God speak to us through his word this morning and give us strength and comfort in the days that lie before us. Amen.